Hi everybody and welcome. Today we're going to look at how to embed Storyline in Canvas. Now Articulate Storyline is a pretty powerful tool. It's an interactive tool for building modules and content. You can even create courses with it. Let's take a look at some examples of what Storyline can look like in an actual Canvas course. So here's a demo page where I used Storyline to build various types of interactions that I want to put into Canvas. I'll show you some examples of what these are. So first here we have the camping checklist. This is an activity that I made to demonstrate hover effects. And you can see that it's interactive. It has interactive buttons. And then I created two different effects. One is when I hover over one of the essential lists on the left here, then I have an arrow that points to that item on the image to the right. The other effect that I have is that when I click on one of these images, it has a pop-up and it describes what that is. So this interaction works pretty nicely within Canvas. Next, this is an interaction I made a few years ago that's more like a course. It's like a mini course within a Canvas course. And so you have a facilitator who walks you through. You can click on objectives, and these are all interactive. And you can browse forward and next. And then I set it up so that there are five, they're kind of like modules, five different components. And you can jump from one to another. And these are interactive, but I'll mention that I don't have this hooked up with SCORM or LTI, so this would be more for self-reflection for their own personal assessment, and it doesn't actually link with the gradebook. And that is possible, but that's not something that I'm going to cover today. Right now, I'm just using Storyline purely for the interactive elements, just so that I can add some multimedia, some functionality to a plain Canvas page. Now I could upload one of these into a quiz and embed it into the instructions of a quiz or the question of a quiz and then have them complete the quiz using the Canvas tool as opposed to putting in their answers and interacting with Storyline. So Storyline would be the presentation tool and then the Canvas quiz would be how I actually assess their performance. So again, this can be interactive. It can be something of a branching scenario. Another interaction that I made, and this is for our academic support center, they wanted to have different APA references so that students could have help with citations and things like that. And so I had various types of APA references that they can use. And then as they click on these, they can hover over and, and then it would provide them information. Another interaction, this is purely visual aesthetic, but I created a slideshow. And here you can put text on the screen. They can navigate from one to another. And so it creates a unique visual experience. You can also create something like a locked menu. And a lot of these templates are available on the Articulate website. In this case, I would go from section to section and I could navigate and go forward and backwards. You can put different elements. You can lock things down and continue to explore. And again, be mindful that we have this functionality within Canvas. We have mastery paths, we have modules in Canvas, and we have pages. But this is interesting because it's simply a component on the screen. And so it makes this particular page in Canvas a bit more interactive. And you can see some of the interactions that we have. And this would be really hard to do using web design, using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It would be pretty involved. So if you can just export something, use Storyline. If you already have access to Storyline, then you can grab a template. And then I'll show you how to embed it. Some of the other interactions would be tab folders. Again, an interaction that you can do within Canvas, but this just packages it up nice and neat. And then you can have something a little more complicated, like a course. This is similar to the course that I showed you a moment ago. So you can have scrolling, you can have animations on the page. There's a drop down menu so you can see your progress. And so that's what we're gonna look at today. Not how to create something in Storyline, but once you have it created, how do you get it into Canvas? And it's a little more tricky than it should be. So first of all, let's hop over to Articulate Storyline because we'll need to create the interaction and then we need to publish it. So if you remember that first interaction, it had camping supplies, and then I have hover overs and drop downs. And so you can see all of the layers and all of the hot spots that I created. So once you have the interaction, well, uh, first you can go ahead and preview it. Make sure this does what it needs to do. And so I have some interactive components. I can hover over. It looks like the hover effects are working. And then if I click on these elements, it looks like everything is in place. So now I'm ready to publish this. So I'm going to click on publish. Okay, so I have a title, I have a folder where I want it to save to, I could put a description if I wanted to. I'm gonna save it for web instead of something like LMS, 
because I don't want to export this as a SCORM package. That is an option. That's something we can talk about on a different day. But right now I want it to be not SCORM. I don't want it to be reporting and tracking. I just want the interaction. So I'm going to save it as web. And for the formats, I'm going to go ahead and save it just as HTML5. Flash is no longer supported by Adobe, so I'm not going to save it as Flash. And there's really no reason to save it as HTML5 slash Flash anymore. I'm just going to choose HTML5, click OK, and I'll go ahead and publish that. And it's going to render the slides, create my package, and then it's going to give me this option, do you want to zip it? And I do want to zip it. You could not zip it, but I am going to zip it because it just makes it easier for me to load up into Canvas. So I'll go ahead and save it here, click Save, and now I can see it here in my folder. So we're going to hang on to that and we're going to go back to Canvas now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the files portion of Canvas. I'm going to create a folder. For now, I'm just going to call it temp. Call it something that you want. And then I'm going to drag and drop the zip file that I just published. And it's going to ask, do you want to expand it? Yeah, I want to expand that. So we'll give it a moment. It depends on how big your file is. Sometimes there's a lot of interactions, a lot of multimedia and graphics. And so it could take a long time to upload. Now I have my files here, my active files in this folder called temp, and I'm going to have to go and do the rights. So in my case, I hold the copyright since I created it, since I have access to the software and all the pictures, then I'm going to go ahead and mark that as I hold the copyright. Or another option would be I have obtained permission to use this file and then I'll publish it. All right. So now we have that set up. Storyline is not going to work if some of these files are unpublished. And so we have to make sure that they're published, otherwise the students won't be able to see it and everything will break. Now I'm going to look for this file called story.html and I'm going to copy the address right there. And now let's go to create a page. I'm going to create a temp page. So on this page, I'm going to put a little bit of text here and let's break up the text. And this is where I want to put in my um, storyline interaction. So I have the cursor here. I'm going to put just a whole bunch of A's right there. And then we'll hop over to the HTML editor. Okay, now I'm in the HTML editor and let's go ahead and make this full screen. And this is where I want to have that interaction. I'm just going to hit a hard, few hard spaces just so that we can have our place there. And what you want to do is you want to type in this code. You want to put in an iframe. And so I'm going to do iframe source equals, and then I'm going to paste in that code. So this is the code. I'm going to close out that quotation mark and I want to delete this part. So I want to keep, this will be your institution dot dot com. It'll be file. It'll be the number. And then you want to keep download, but all of this section right here, question mark download, you want that to be deleted. So I'm going to get rid of that. And that way, when they click on it, it's not going to download the file onto their computer. It's going to play the file in the Canvas page. What I would suggest also is to put in a width and a height. So in this case, I'm going to put in a width of maybe 740 and a height of 560. And we'll see how that looks. When I save this, Canvas is going to add its own code. You can just ignore that. But this, these are the essential components that you'll want. You want an iframe. And the source is that file that you copied and just delete the last part, the question mark download, and then put in your width and your height and close out the iframe. So let's see how that looks on our page. Okay, here I have my content and I can see that there are some scroll bars. And so I think my width and my height, maybe I should tinker around with that and create something a little bit bigger. But I can see that the functionality looks like it's okay. I have hover over effects. I have clickable options. I can click from one to another and I can close things down. So the interactivity looks good. Let's just tidy up this width and the height. Let's just maybe bump that up to 800, but I don't even know. We're going to eyeball 800 by 700, see if that takes care of it. Okay, here's the page and it looks like it's working. I'll test some of the interactions and I have my hover overs. I have my clickable options and it's looking good. The reason I like this approach in that I upload a zip file from Storyline into Canvas and then embed it using an iframe on a Canvas page is because I can have a lot of elements. I can have my title, I can have text, I can have my interaction, then I can put more text in there. I can incorporate pictures, I can have more than one Storyline file. So if I were to use SCORM, the advantage to SCORM is that if you have some sort of assessment within Storyline, 
then you can feed that score into the gradebook directly. But the disadvantage to using SCORM that way is that you don't know the items that the students got correct or incorrect. All it passes is a score. So if they got 17 out of 20, you don't know where those three are. And so you want to be able to look at your students to be able to know which items they got wrong. And if the class all got the same item wrong, that's important to know too, because that means you need to modify your instruction. So LTI would be probably a better use of gradebook passback, but honestly, I just don't even use Storyline for that purpose. And if I were to, then I would put Storyline within a Canvas quiz. And that way I get better analytics. So for me, I like Storyline just for the interactivity, and then I can put that onto a Canvas page and increase the interactivity that way. So if you use Storyline, then I'd like to know if you found this useful and how you use Storyline within Canvas or how you'd like to use Storyline within Canvas. Leave a comment below and share your insights and applications with us. I appreciate you being with me and please don't forget to subscribe. You can also visit us on social media and review my comprehensive write-ups on our website, howtocanvas.com. If you have a suggestion for a topic that you'd like to cover, then please leave me a note and I'd be happy to explore that with you. As always, keep rocking and rolling and I want to wish you happy teaching and learning.